Hello, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva podcast, a show where we look into trends, claims, and headlines so that you can make science-backed decisions about what to eat. I'm your host, Monica Reinagle, and today's episode was prompted by an email from Sandy, who wanted to know if I'd ever done a podcast on creatine. Sandy is 75 years old and apparently something of a super senior. She says that her personal trainer has recommended creatine for both its muscle building benefits as well as for cognitive function. Creatine is one of the few topics that I haven't covered over the course of the last 15 years. To be honest, I thought of it primarily as a supplement for bodybuilders, so I left it for my colleagues on the Get Fit Guy podcast to answer, which they have. But I have to give Sandy's personal trainer credit for being aware of some newer research on its potential benefits for older adults. Creatine is an amino acid that we get from meat and fish, and our own liver also makes creatine. It's stored in our muscles where it's used to power short bursts of high-intensity muscle work, such as the effort involved in lifting, carrying, or pushing something very heavy, or perhaps jumping from a standing position. And it's been widely used by bodybuilders and weightlifters for decades to improve performance gains. And unlike many of the things that bodybuilders might use to enhance their performance, this one is both legal and supported by some pretty solid research. One important thing to note is that creatine doesn't build muscle directly. Rather, it allows you to squeeze a little bit of extra effort out of your muscles, and that effort is what builds muscle. And that little bit of extra effort that creatine makes possible during a workout can result in a little bit of extra muscle. Without the workout, though, creatine really doesn't do anything for you. That small incremental gain might be meaningful to someone who is lifting weights competitively, but I didn't really see it as important to those of us who are lifting weights or working out for general health and wellness. However, In recent years, there have been some interesting studies on the benefits of creatine specifically in older adults who are at increased risk of muscle loss. And to be perfectly honest, I wasn't aware of the research on creatine and cognitive function until Sandy and her trainer brought it to my attention. Let's actually start with that research on cognitive function. We already know that things like sleep deprivation can negatively impact our ability to think straight. Interestingly, sleep deprivation and other stressful situations are also associated with decreased levels of creatine in the brain. And there is some preliminary evidence to show that taking creatine supplements can both raise creatine levels in the brain and also reduce some of the cognitive processing deficits that accompany those brain-stressing situations. I think what's more relevant to Sandy's situation, and probably most of us, is research on cognitive function as we get older. And here, I think the best we can say is that the research is promising. Creatine appears to have beneficial effects on short-term memory and reasoning, but for other aspects of cognition, including long-term memory, attention, reaction time, and things like the ability to find the word you're searching for. There are only a handful of studies on those, and the results have been inconsistent. The benefits of creatine supplementation are more apparent in vegetarians, and that makes sense because they presumably get very little creatine from their diets. And that suggests that older people who may also have lower creatine levels could also get more benefits than younger folks. At least one of the studies that looks specifically at older people did find some boost in cognitive power. But all of these studies were quite short in duration, most of them only a few days long. I think there's certainly enough here to merit more research, but in my opinion, what we have so far doesn't feel strong enough to support a recommendation for ongoing creatine supplementation specifically for brain health. That may change, and if it does, I will update you. There have also been a handful of studies looking at the effect of creatine supplementation on muscle mass and strength, specifically in older adults. 
A typical protocol starts with what they call a loading dose of about 20 grams a day spread out in four doses. And you would do that for five to seven days. And then you would go back down to 2.5 to 5 grams a day as a maintenance dose. In most of the studies, supplementation did have a measurable benefit on strength and muscle tissue. But just like with the bodybuilders, the benefits of creatine supplementation are completely dependent on you also doing significant strength training on an ongoing basis. But it's important to note that dedicated strength training without creatine supplementation also results in increased strength and muscle tissue in older adults. So is that incremental boost that you get from creatine actually necessary? Does that extra little bit of muscle make any meaningful difference in your health and well-being? Or can you get the benefits that you want and you need simply by doing the strength training? My educated guess to that question is, yes, you can. Now, of course, there may be some scenarios where that extra boost, either in muscle or in cognition, would be more meaningful, maybe in recovering from an injury or surgery or some other stressor. In other words, I kind of wonder whether the true promise of creatine isn't so much as a supplement that everyone over 50 needs to take, but as a supplement that might be used in more targeted situations. We're just going to have to see where this research takes us. Now, I know some of you are more of the mind that if something like this helps even a little bit, then it might be worth it as long as it doesn't pose any risks. And the downsides appear to be few. Creatine is inexpensive, and it appears to be safe even at relatively high doses. That said, there are some common side effects, including stomach cramps, nausea, and diarrhea, especially with those higher doses. These can often be reduced by lowering the amount and spreading it out in smaller doses throughout the day. And taking creatine supplements with food and plenty of water is also recommended. So Sandy, I hope that gives you some valuable information that you can use to make a decision about whether to go with your trainer's recommendation. We still have time to fit in one more listener Q&A, and this one's from Victoria, who writes, what's the latest research regarding cranberry juice and the claim that it helps prevent UTIs in women? Cranberry juice or cranberry juice supplements are often recommended as a way to prevent painful urinary tract infections, and many women swear by it, but the research is murky. The supposed mechanism is a specific compound in cranberry that reduces the ability of bacteria to attach to the lining of the bladder or the urinary tract. And without the ability to attach, they can't get enough traction to create an infection before they simply get flushed through the system. But it has been difficult to confirm their clinical effectiveness in controlled research studies. A 2013 meta-analysis of studies found no statistical reduction in UTIs in those who were consuming cranberry juice instead of a placebo. However, there were a number of factors that might have obscured the results. For one thing, a lot of women dropped out of the study. Unlike the sugar-sweetened cranberry juice cocktail that you may be familiar with, undiluted, unsweetened cranberry juice isn't very palatable. And the sweetened stuff just doesn't contain enough of the phenolic compounds to have any benefit. Cranberry juice supplements, which contain dehydrated powdered cranberry juice, are one way around that issue, although the research on them isn't any more definitive. Another factor in these trials is the total number of UTIs that occurred was so low that it might have been hard to detect a statistically significant difference between the groups, and a larger study might have had different results. Well, in 2016, a larger trial enrolled almost 400 women who had a history of recurring UTIs and randomized them into two groups. One group drank eight ounces of a special cranberry juice beverage that was high in the antibacterial compounds, so not the stuff that you get at the grocery store, and the other drank a placebo juice that looked and tasted similar. After six months of drinking this juice every single day, those taking the cranberry juice did report 
35% fewer UTIs than those who took the placebo. So not exactly a home run. My friends at examine.com calculated that on average, a woman would have to drink cranberry juice every day for three and a half years in order to have one fewer UTI. It should also be noted that this latest study was funded by Ocean Spray. Now, that in and of itself does not invalidate the results, of course, but it may have influenced the study design in a way that increased the chances that a positive effect would occur. So, Victoria, if you enjoy cranberry juice, especially the unsweetened kind, and you are prone to UTIs, there's certainly no harm in sipping on it. If nothing else, it's a good source of antioxidants. But unfortunately, it doesn't appear to be a silver bullet against UTIs. And I'm not sure that taking a supplement every day would be worth it for the level of protection or prevention that it might provide. This is Monica Reinagel, the Nutrition Diva, and thank you for sending your nutrition questions. If you have a question you'd like me to answer, you can email it to me at nutrition at quickanddirtytips.com. And you can also leave me a message at 443-961-6206. If your question is more on the topic of behavior change, you might also enjoy my other podcast. It's called The Change Academy, and we talk about behavior change. Look for that wherever you listen. Nutrition Diva is a quick and dirty tips podcast, and it is supported by Adam Cecil, Nathan Sems, Davina Tomlin, Holly Hutchings, and Morgan Christensen. Thanks to all of them, and thanks to you for listening.